Hello everyone. Welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers. And in this video, we're going to be solving a very interesting exponential equation with logarithms. So we have z to the power ln z equals i, and we're going to be solving for z values. I'll make two attempts, and let's see how they end up. So let's start with the first one. For my first method, I'd like to replace z with polar form, r times e to the power i theta. r is the modulus, remember, and theta is the argument, the angle, right? If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out the lecture videos, and let us know if you have any questions in the comment section down below. So if I replace z with that, of course, we're going to talk about the ln of a complex number, and this is going to give us ln r, which is the ln absolute value of z plus i theta. Of course, I just use theta here. You could also write theta plus 2 pi n instead of theta. Theta just represents the principal value. Okay? Now, if we do the replacements, we get r e to the i theta raised to the power ln z, which is ln r plus i theta. So to be able to raise this number to a complex power, I'm going to go ahead and separate them. So kind of like using exponentiation. Again, this could be problematic because these are not real numbers, but I'm going to do it anyways. So write this as r to the power ln r plus i theta times e to the i theta, and then that is raised to the power ln r plus i theta. Okay? Cool. Now. We're going to go ahead and separate these, r to the ln r times r to the i theta. And then this one is going to be e to the i theta ln r times e to the i theta ln r times i theta. That's going to be i squared theta squared, but that's negative theta squared. And of course, we do need to just, you know, um, when I distribute, I'm going to be multiplying those two things. So that's going to be it, right, I guess. Now, notice that these two expressions are pretty much equivalent because if you write the e to the ln r as r, then think about this as raised to the power i theta. These two are going to be the same, right? I mean, sorry, not that, those. These two. Okay, I messed up. These two are going to be equivalent. So we're going to put them together. In other words, we can just square this. So we're going to get as the real pieces, these two things. So I'm going to write them together, r to the ln r times e to the negative theta squared multiplied by e to the power 2i theta ln r. Awesome. Here's what we can do. This is equal to what? i, right? We didn't ln both sides, so this should be i. Well, I can kind of replace i with something, which is e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. So I'm just going to add multiples of 2 pi on the right-hand side, but I didn't do it on the left-hand side. Notice that, right? So we could do this, basically. That's basically one way to approach it. But notice that the modulus is 1 on the right-hand side. So do you think it should be 1 on the left-hand side, too? So this is probably equal to 1. But the problem with that is that doesn't imply r equals 1 because r is not going to be 1 anyways. You'll see in a little bit what r is going to look like. But you can try to solve that equation. There are two variables, so that's problematic. But another approach for this one would be using Euler's formula like r to the ln r times e to the negative theta squared because these are all real, right? And then multiply this by cosine of... Now notice that what i is being multiplied by 2 theta ln r so that's basically our argument in this case, you see? And then you're going to set this equal to i, which is basically 0 plus 1i. So when you distribute, set this product equal to 0, set that product equal to 1, you'll get a system, and hopefully you'll get something from there, right? But again, this is going to be very painful. And can we find r and theta from here? That would be a good question. Anyways, I told you I was going to make two attempts. This was my first attempt, but not complete. It is incomplete. Hopefully, someone can take it from here. Now, the second approach 
is going to be pretty much the same idea, but this time I'm going to, I'm not going to mess with the left hand side, but just write i as e to the power i times pi over 2, and of course don't forget to add the 2 pi n to it. And then we can do the natural logs, and that will be helpful. If you do the natural log here and here, things would simplify a great deal. And you can basically bring down L and Z. Can we always do that, by the way, with complex numbers? That would be a good question. L and Z squared equals, and now this whole thing is going to be the answer because L and E is 1. But we got to be careful here because the expression inside the parentheses is on the right hand side. If, it, if that's a negative quantity, then we're kind of talking about square roots of negative times i. And the argument in that case is going to be 3 pi over 3. Think about 3i or negative 3i, right? For 3i, it's going to be here. Negative 3i is going to be here. So they have different arguments. So the coefficient of i really matters. That's why we kind of have to specify what it's going to look like. And there are so many cases that I'm just going to make some assumptions. So suppose, suppose n is greater than or equal to 0. This implies pi over 2 plus 2 pi n is greater than 0 because if um, the minimum value of n is 0, if even if n is 0, this is going to be positive. Of course, for positive values, it's always going to be positive. Make sense? And in this case, we're going to get an argument for this number here, which is a positive multiple of i. That's going to be pi over 2. Right? That's important because we want to write this number in polar form. So here's what we can do. We can actually write this as ln z squared equals pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. And then this is going to be multiplied by i. But instead, I want to write this as e to the power pi over 2. Make sense? Okay, but uh, aren't we supposed to add some uh, number to it? Well, you can, but again, it's up to you. Let's say we can add something like 2 pi k, right? And then, of course, this needs to be multiplied by i, right? So we kind of use the polar form, r e to the i theta. And this is the theta, the argument. Remember, I told you the argument is going to be pi over 2. That's where that comes from. Make sense? Okay, now we're going to take square roots. And let's just go with the positive square root. Again, the negative square root is going to be similar uh, because we're going to be, uh, they're going to be opposites. So we're going to square root this. Make sense? And then we're going to cut the angle in half here. That's going to be pi over 4 plus pi k, and all of that is multiplied by i. So notice that there are two square roots if k is 0 and if k is 1. If one of them is going to have pi over 4, the other one is going to have 5 pi over 4, but they're going to give you um, different values that are going to be opposites. Make sense? And of course, this is just the L and Z value, and I'm looking for Z. So how do you find Z from here? By doing e to the L and Z. So Z is going to be e to the power, e to the power that, which is square root of pi over 2 plus 2 pi n times e to the power pi over 4 plus pi k multiplied by i. Again, playing with the values of n and k, you're going to be getting a lot of solutions. And let's go ahead and take a look at some solutions from Wolfram Alpha. This is what they're going to look like. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.